It's time for Life Point Kids. Stand to your feet and let's sing. Every good thing, every good thing. 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 You're the reason for every good thing, every heartbeat. Every day we get to breathe. You're the reason for anything that lasts. Every second chance, every laugh. Life is so sweet. Hi everyone, welcome back to LifePoint Kids. We're so happy that you're here today. If this is your first time with us or if you've been here a gazillion times before, we're really glad that you're here. This Friday, March 18th, is the crazy night of awesome here at LifePoint. It's going to be so much fun. A crazy night of awesome is a night of fun and crazy audience participation games for the whole family. That's right. It's for grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, everybody. The audience will be divided into two teams to compete in wacky games on stage. Everyone gets to be involved. Like I said, it's going to be for children, teams, moms, dads, even your grandparents. The winning team gets to go outside first to the ultimate 40 foot long s'mores pit. Yes, you got it right. I said it a 40 foot long s'mores pit. You do not want to miss this event. Now you can go to Life Point Kids Facebook page or to the church website to get more information about this event. Well, today we're starting a new series and it's called 24, a day that saved the world. In the last 24 hours of Jesus' life, he went through many twists, turns, and difficulties. Jesus was betrayed by a friend, arrested, put on trial, convicted, beaten, mocked, and sentenced to death by being nailed to a cross. All in only 24 hours. See, Jesus went through all of this for one reason. It's because he loves us so much. This series will take us on a journey through the last 24 hours of Jesus' life, from the Last Supper to Gethsemane, all the way to the cross. We are going to learn all about why we celebrate Easter. Well, it's time to get started, so let's go to Jesus in prayer and ask him to bless our time together today. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we get to come to church today. We thank you that we get to learn your word. We get to spend time with our friends fellowshipping. And Lord, even if we don't get to be here in person, we get to at least enjoy the service and learn at the same time as our friends who are present. So Lord, we ask you to help us have a great service. Help us to open our ears, open our eyes and our minds so that we can receive this important word that you have for us today. We ask you to bless our time together. And we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. The following takes place between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Events occur in real time. <clears throat> okay, perhaps we should skip forward just a bit when I'm not slobbering in my sleep dreaming about dancing kittens. Ha, <laughs> much better. That's me. My name, Special Agent Jack Bow Wow. I work for a top secret organization called Q-Tip. Q-Tip stands for Questionable Training in Progress. Q-Tip is the training ground for some of the world's most powerful secret agents. I am a high-level supervisor who specializes in training young agents. Now, I've been told that we have a brand new group of recruits right here inside Q-Tip headquarters. Oh, what? You think this is a men's restroom? <laughs> Wait till you see inside. Hmm. Looks like nobody's here. Well, I was told by my boss that there was gonna be a brand new group of recruits right here, and they were ready to start their training. I wonder where they could be. Oh, I think I might be getting a message about that right now. Let me read it. Your fuzzy kitten pajama pants are in the dryer. Love, Grandma. Oh, <laughs> wrong message. I'm sorry, let me get to the right one. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Well, it looks like headquarters says that you are my new recruits. Very well. I think I should probably catch you up as to what's been going on. Lately, we have been fighting against Q-Tip's arch nemesis. His name, Dr. Fullowax. <laughs> Dr. Fullowax is a special kind of evil and a special kind of crazy. He's been trying to shut down Q-Tip's training program for years. We even hear that he recently stole a copy of our secret code book and is planning to use it against us. That's why we are wasting no time. Speaking of time, we've been doing a lot of studying of time lately. Oh, not just any time. Oh, no. We've been studying the last 24 hours of Jesus' life here on earth. You see, Jesus was God's son who left heaven and came to save the world from their sins. Jesus taught some amazing lessons in the last 24 hours of his life on earth. And over the next few times that we get together, you're going to learn some of those important lessons. Today's lesson is all about serving others. You see, Jesus was a powerful leader, but he also served others. He wants us to learn how to serve others as well. So today, you new recruits are going to go through several training exercises to help you understand how to serve others. I hope you're ready. Now, I may need to contact you throughout the day, so you just keep your satellite tuned into this frequency. I'll break in when necessary. Well, time is of the essence, so I'm gonna let you get into your training right now. Until next time, this is Special Agent Jack Bow Wow. <laughs> I love that. Signing off. Wow, that's just amazing. Did you hear what Special Agent Bow Wow said? He said, we're all going to be the new recruits for Q-Tip. Isn't that so cool? And did you see Q-Tip headquarters? I wonder if there's a bathroom in that bathroom too. Whoops, did I just say that out loud? Sorry. Anyways, I'm so stoked about today's lesson on how to be the greatest by serving others. It looks like we have a great service ahead of us, so let's go to Skittles to find out today's what's up. Now remember, after Skittles finishes, anytime you hear us say, what's up, stand to your feet and holler out the what's up as loud as you can, okay? So here's your friend and mine, Skittles.
Quero. What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E F. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how to be the greatest. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will put others first and think of me last. You know, some people, they really want to be the greatest and they think that makes them better than everybody else. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I am the greatest, and you know what that means? That means you don't matter. <laughs> Sorry, little pit squeaks. No way, man. Jesus didn't treat people like that. Uh-uh. He said, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, then you got to serve other people. That means others first and you last. So, anytime. Anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I will put others first and think of me last. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior, Skittles out, baby. Hey everyone, let's... <laughs> wait, wait, drawing praises to Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Stand up to your feet and let's see.
Cause all I need is what I have in him That's why my hope is in My hope is in the Lord My hope is in the Lord I belong to him He will never let me go oh, oh, oh. My hope is in the Lord I can count on him My hope is in the Lord I can't help but feel a little In this series, we are learning from the last 24 hours of Jesus' life. What's up? I will put others first and think of me last. This is for real this time. In this series, we are learning from the last 24 hours of Jesus' life. He went through a lot during the 24 hours, and it all started in the upper room of a house in Jerusalem. Jesus had gather, gathered all of the 12 disciples to this room in order to have a meal with them. This meal was part of the Feast of the Passover. It is often called the Last Supper because it was the last time Jesus had a meal with his disciples. After the meal was over, the disciples and Jesus began to move away from the table and relax. While the disciples talked, they noticed Jesus get up, take off his outer robe, wrap himself in a towel, and grab a bowl of water. The disciples weren't sure what Jesus was planning to do, but they were very curious. Suddenly, Jesus began to kneel down and wash the, the feet of the disciples. Now, there is something you need to understand. In Jesus' time, the act of washing someone's feet was something usually left for a servant. In that time, People wore sandals everywhere they went. There weren't concrete or paved roads to travel on. The roads were dusty and dirty. That meant everyone's feet became dusty and dirty. Often, when people entered a house, a servant who worked for the owner of the house would wash your feet as you entered. That way, the dirt from everyone's feet would not dirty up the house. When Jesus got to the disciple named Peter, Peter said, Master, you will never wash my feet. He felt that Jesus shouldn't be doing something like that. After all, Jesus was a very important man. He was the Son of God. He shouldn't be doing a servant's job. But Jesus insisted that he wash Peter's feet. So Peter let him. After he had finished washing the feet of every disciple, Jesus stood and taught something very important. He said, follow my example. Do for others as I have done for you. He went on to teach them, that anyone who wants to be the greatest in the kingdom of God should take on the role of a servant. If you really want to be a leader, you must learn to serve others and put them ahead of yourself. 
That's exactly what you're going to learn about in your lesson today. You're going to learn that to be the greatest, you have to choose to humble yourself and become a servant to others. That's exactly what Jesus did. I will put others first and think of me last. Hello children, I'm sure I need no introduction, but for those of you who have the audacity to not know who I am, I will provide my known identity. Yes, I am the notorious villain, Dr. Full of Wax. Dr. Always Full of Wax. And this is my friend, Mr. Cuddles. Mm. Hi, Mr. Cuddles, say hi. And my nemesis is the world's known do-gooder, Agent Jack. Bow Wow and his secret agency Q-Tip. But little does Bow Wow know I have obtained a copy of his secret code book known as the Bible. The Bible. Okay, Dave, when I, we talked about this at lunch, when I snapped my fingers, you're supposed to put the book in my hand. Remember, I bought you a smoothie so that you would remember. Okay, let's try it again. I'll give you another chance because we forgive, don't we, Mr. Cuddles? We forgive. Mm -hmm. Not always, though. All right, I have obtained a copy of his secret code book known as the Bible. And I will use this Bible to discover their secrets and put an end to Q-tip forever. <laughs> so this week's secret message says this. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank and the leader should be like a servant. Luke 22, 26. Hmm, now this is an interesting message. Perhaps if I have some help saying it, then it would become more clearer to my brain. How about if the girls stand up and help me? Are you ready, girls? On the count of three. One, two, three. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Luke 22, 26. Very good, girls. Now you can sit down. Now I need the boys to stand up to say it with me. Then maybe I can figure out what this message means. Ready, boys? On the count of three. One, two, and three. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Luke 22, 26. Great job, you may sit down. You know, I think I may have cracked this code, Mr. Cuddles. You see, when I hear the word greatest, I think of myself as the greatest villain of all time. But this code is suggesting that to be the greatest, one must humble themselves and, and put yourself last. Huh, I think I have it, but to make sure, let me have everyone stand up and say it with me. Ready, everybody? On the count of three. One, two, three. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Luke 22, 26. Good job, everybody. You can have a seat. Well, Agent Bow Wow, looks like I cracked your code and learned something that would make me a better person. <laughs> nah, I better get back to trying to crack Q-Tip's code book, The Bible. Until next time, I'm Dr. Full of Wax, and this is Mr. Cuddles bidding you adieu, and also saying, you know, actually, sorry, I can't hear what anybody is saying. Do we have a real Q-Tip in the house somewhere? No? Okay. Hello. Hello, recruits. It's me again, Jack. Well, you've already heard how Jesus washed the disciples' feet. It was an incredible act of servanthood. 
what you are about to enter into the most important part of your training. I want you to sit up straight and listen because your leader is going to teach you a lesson called how to be the greatest. It's all about how to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. So listen up and learn a lot. This is Special Agent Jack Bow Wow. <laughs> yep, still cool. Signing off. Today's lesson is called How to Be the Greatest. Have you ever wanted to be the greatest at something? You know, maybe there was a spelling bee at school and you studied all the spelling words for weeks just so you could end up on stage as the last speller standing and be presented with a certificate like this. At that moment, everyone would know you are the greatest speller. Or maybe you wanted to win the basketball free throw contest or the batting contest in baseball. You practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced until you were the best you could possibly be. Then you went out and you won the trophy for being the greatest basketball free throw shooter or the greatest batter in baseball. At that moment, you were able to feel like you were on top of the world as the greatest. Maybe you had a dream of one day owning your own company and people would have to call you boss. So you like to say, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. See, if you're the boss, you don't have to listen to anybody. You're in charge and you are the greatest and you are the best and you are the boss. Well, we all have dreams like that at times. There's, there's a longing deep inside of us to be the greatest at something or to be the boss. Well, the disciples of Jesus often had dreams of greatness too. They were constantly arguing about who would be the greatest. That's why Jesus taught them the lesson he taught them at the Last Supper. By washing their feet, Jesus showed them that even the boss, which Jesus was, must be a servant to others. Do you want to be the greatest? Well, to be the greatest in God's kingdom, you must be a servant like Jesus. I must be a servant like Jesus. Jesus didn't act like he was better than everyone else. He didn't treat other people as less of a person than he was. Jesus served others. Not only did Jesus serve by washing the disciples' feet, but Jesus served the hurting by healing their sickness and their diseases. Jesus served the lonely by spending time with them and being their friend. Jesus served every person he came in contact with. He understood that being the greatest was not about bragging and treating others as less than he was. He knew that being the greatest meant that you have the responsibility to help and bless others. If you want to be the greatest, you must follow Jesus' example and serve others. Not only that, but if you want to be the greatest, you must humble yourself. I must humble myself. Jesus was a teacher, yet he chose to become the servant. Nobody made him do it. He chose to do it. He chose to humble himself. That means that he chose to take on a role that was less than what he could have chosen. Jesus could have forced the disciples to wash his feet, but that's not what he did. He chose to humble himself and take on the role of a servant. And you and I must do the same thing. We must make the same choice. When you see someone in your class that's hurting and lonely, don't wait for someone to force you to be their friend. Choose to be humble. Choose to humble yourself and be their friend. Don't think of yourself as better than them. Jesus humbled himself and so should you. Finally, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, you must put others first and yourself last. I must put others first and me last. Everywhere Jesus went, Jesus put others first. Instead of saying, 
I'm the greatest, Jesus showed us that others were more important. He prayed for others. He helped others. He healed others. He fed others. And he even bled and died for the sins of others. Jesus did not put himself first. Jesus lived in a way that put others ahead of himself. It's not easy, but we must follow Jesus' example. He never once demanded that people treat him like the king that he is. Instead, he took on a role of a servant and put others first, himself last. Can you imagine what a group of kids would look like if they lived like this? You know, others first, me last. I imagine that every kid in the city would want to come to that church because they knew that we, they would be treated with love, they would be treated with kindness, and they would be treated with care. If you want to be the greatest, then you have to be like Jesus. Jesus was a servant and we should be too. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we ask you to help us with this today. Lord, help, to, help us to remember to be humble. Help us to remember to put others first, the way that you did. Help us to live by the example that you set. Lord, you are, you're a king. You are the king of the world and king of the earth, and you came and were a servant to others. So, Lord, we ask that, we, uh, that you help us to remember to be that same type of example, to serve people instead of ourselves. Put others first and us last. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up? What's up? I will put others first and think of me last. Brain, brain. It's time to do the brain drain. What can you remember from today's lesson? Question number one. What's up today? I will put others first and think of me last. Others first, me last, or me first, everyone else last. Good job. I will put others first and think of me last. Question number two. What was the name of the special agent in our intro video today? Jack Black, Jack Bow Wow, or Jack Beard? You got it, Jack Bow Wow. Question number three. Who was the person who taught us our power verse today? Dr. Donut, Dr. Dirty Ears, or Dr. Full of Wax? Doctor full of wax. Question number four. What were Jesus and his disciples doing at the beginning of our Bible story? Eating supper, praying, or preaching to a large crowd? Good job, everyone. They were eating supper. Question number five. What did Jesus begin to do after they ate? Did he tell them a secret? Did he wash their feet? Or did he share his meal? You've got it, he washed their feet. Question number six, who told Jesus he could never wash his feet? Thomas, Judas, or Peter? That's right, Peter told Jesus he could never wash his feet. Question number seven, according to our lesson today, I must be a servant like Jesus, I must be a healer like Jesus, or I must be a giver like Jesus. You've got it, I must be a servant like Jesus. Question number eight. According to our lesson today, I must forgive myself, I must humble myself, or I must offer myself. That's right, I must humble myself. Question number nine. According to our lesson today, I must put others first before myself, I must put others first then me, or I must put others first me last. Great memory, I must put others first me last. In question number 10, where was our power verse found? Luke 22, 26, 
John 5, 12, or Mark 14, 3. You've got it, Luke 22, 26. Well, how did you do? Did you answer them all correctly? Did you get most of them right? Did you do your very best? Fantastic. Let's stop. I will put others first and think of me last. Game on! You know, I'm gonna dominate at these games because this is what I do all day in the nursery with the other kids. You'll be like... Okay, I've never played this one. Oh no, how will you be able to do it if you've the never little, practiced it? The little kids would be like this, <laughs> and he'll be like... <laughs> I have an easy one because the biggest is mine. What are you trying to do? <laughs> you guys are taking forever. Wheel Emma, you're, you don't, you're not even starting. Something good going on there. <laughs> she's, she's, she's proud of it, okay? So don't even try to use this. That's encouraging it. Uh, oh. <laughs> All right, today's game is a little bit of time. Now, it's a little bit different this time because I have young, older, and old lady, or oldest. <laughs> uh, and, and so what I've done to make it fair today is... She has one puzzle with five of the pieces already in it. No, not that quite. But she has one puzzle, and you have two puzzles, which means you can actually win the game. You're, you're not disqualified because of the fact that you're older. So you have two puzzles, you each have one puzzle. Okay, now, as you can tell, I mix the puzzle pieces up, and when I say go, you are going to sort your puzzle and put it together, and the first one to complete their puzzle or puzzles is going to be the winner, okay? Now, are you ready? No. Well, you're not, because you know it's gonna happen. I'm gonna have y'all play it twice, or three times, or whatever, the, because the first person to put their puzzles together, or puzzle together, two times, will be the winner. Okay. Here we go, all right. Are you ready? On your mark, hands in the air. Like you just don't care. All right, yeah, I, that was very good, there you go. All right, on your mark, get set, go! Savannah, you are the winner of this round, okay? And it was really funny because I watched Savannah take the shirt and go like this. Get out of my way. Wait, I didn't even know. I yeah, I know. Okay, I okay so let's do this again. Dump them out. Up. Mix them up. And I would like for you and you to switch buttons. And you to switch buttons. All righty, so are we ready? On your mark, the first person to get two games, one in a row is the winner. On your mark, it's set, go! I don't know how to go! I don't know how Draw the name out of the bucket. All right, here you go. Who's our virtual winner today? Not me. <laughs> Simon Eckhart. All right, Simon, you are the virtual winner today. If you are watching, let us know so we can give you a $5 Walmart gift card. If you're here in person, come yank me by the collar and let me know you're here. All right, good job, guys. Y'all did really well. What's up? I will put a 
others first and think of me last. We are really glad you were part of Kids Church today. We hope you enjoyed the service and have had the opportunity to learn about how much Jesus really loves you. Let's pray and ask Jesus to help us with what we learned today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that we got to come to church today and fellowship with our friends and, and, and learn more about you. Lord, we ask you to help us to apply what we've learned to our lives. And even more important, we ask you to help us to share it with our friends. Let them know how much you love them and care about them, Lord. We ask you to help us have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, remember, this Friday night, this Friday night, not next Friday night, but this Friday night is a crazy night of awesome. And we hope to see you there. If not, we'll see you next week at LifePoint Kids, where we're learning to live for Jesus every day.